This is Plant-Based Briefing, Our Feminist Right to Resist Comparison with the Females of Other Species, by Karen Davis at upc-online.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. This is the Plant-Based Podcast, where I curate and narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And I'm pleased to have permission to share content from United Poultry Concerns. So now let's get to today's Plant-Based Briefing. Our Feminist Right to Resist Comparison with the Females of Other Species, by Karen Davis at upc-online.org. A woman employed on a chicken breeder farm in Maryland wrote a letter once to the local newspaper berating the defenders of chickens for trying to make her lose her job, threatening her ability to support herself and her daughter. For her, breeder hens were mean birds who peck your arm when you're trying to collect the eggs. In her defense of her life and her daughter's life, she failed to see the comparison between her motherly protection of her child and the exploited hen's effort to protect her own offspring, for the hen a losing battle. Animal farming erects an unbridgeable boundary between humans and animals, especially farmed animals. The them versus us pervades industrial farming, which is rooted in traditional farming. The poultry industry takes no pains to ensure that producers convey the message that hens are distinct from companion species to diffuse the misperceptions. It isn't that agribusiness elevates companion species particularly, but that dogs and cats are the basis of the $30 billion pet food industry that serves as a dumping ground for millions of newborn male chicks called hatchery debris and slaughterhouse refuse. See Who's in Your Dog's Food linked here. The idea that humans are a vastly superior order of being, distinct from the rest of creation, pervades society despite Charles Darwin's demonstration of the evolutionary continuity of living creatures. Even among progressives, interference with the presumption of human superiority and exceptionalism can ruffle feathers. Hostility among human groups is an integral part of human history, but just as bickering individuals and nations come together against a common enemy— so most people are united in defense of human supremacy over and radical separation from all other forms of life. This prejudice can be seen in the resentment of some core feminists toward any suggestion that their suffering and other experiences are comparable to those of non-human females. They believe that cross-species comparisons crimp their identity as unique. They do not want to share the privilege of oppression. An article I recently wrote titled, The Hen is a Symbol of Motherhood for Reasons We May Have Forgotten, So Let Us Recall, was rejected by a progressive publication for implying similarities between human mothers and chicken mothers. The editors considered the comparison a slur against women. Carol J. Adams in The Feminist Traffic in Animals, in the book Neither Man Nor Beast, describes how far some feminists will go to deny other animals' capacity for meaningful social relationships and even their fear of death to which she responds that these beliefs are possible only as long as we do not inquire closely into the lives of animals as subjects. While some women may wince at comparison with their female counterparts, their sisters, in nature or captivity, men, on the other hand, relish linking themselves to wild animals, by which they mean powerful male predators, jaguars, pumas, wolves, and the like, whom they iconize as masculine. What man chafes at being likened to a big cat? Feminists who resent comparisons with non-human female animals, whose behavior is similar in all relevant respects, are not liberated, in my view. An environmentalist named J. Baird Calicott in 1980 dismissed all farmed animals categorically as having been bred to docility, tractability, stupidity, and dependency. It is literally meaningless to suggest that they can be liberated, he wrote in Animal Liberation, a Triangular Affair in Environmental Ethics. This sounds a lot like a stereotypical Victorian man's view of women, and it is every bit as factitious. Yet even today, some feminists are battling a demeaning image of themselves as the equivalent of a mere farm animal, which is itself a demeaning and ignorant caricature. Though science remains speciesist, the fields of cognitive ethology and evolutionary biology are expanding our understanding of how intimately we are connected to the other animals on the planet. In The Chicken Challenge, What Contemporary Studies of Fowl Mean for Science and Ethics, Carolyn L. Smith and Jane Johnson present the science showing that chickens demonstrate complex cognitive abilities. Quote, The science outlined in this paper challenges common thinking about chickens. Chickens are not mere automata. Instead, they have been shown to possess sophisticated cognitive abilities. Their communication is not simply reflexive, but is responsive to relevant social and environmental factors. 
Chickens demonstrate an awareness of themselves as separate from others, can recognize particular individuals and appreciate their standing with respect to those individuals, and show an awareness of the attentional states of their fellow fowl. Further, chickens have been shown to engage in reasoning through performing abstract and social transitive inferences. This growing body of scientific data could inform a rethinking about the treatment of these animals, unquote. In May 2018, Mark Beckoff, Ph.D., Professor Emeritus of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of Colorado Boulder, published a Mother's Day plea for mother cows on the Psychology Today website. In What Would a Mother Food Cow Tell Us About Her Children?, he writes that he is freely using the word children rather than offspring or young that are usually used when writing about young non-humans. These youngsters are, of course, their children, and many behavioral patterns have evolved so that they receive the best parental care possible. To deny our kinship with creatures who are other than human risks estrangement from the living world to a pathological degree. To feel slighted that a hen or a cow or a sow could love her children as a woman loves hers is petty and disassociated from reality. I agree with animal rights author and attorney Jim Mason, who in an interview advises against separation from our kindred animals. He urges us to practice a sense of kinship by seeing behaviors that we share with other animals and see these as your own experiences. Dwell on that emotionally and spiritually. Feel that sense of the things we have in common with these others. Read the complete interview with Jim Mason linked here. I hope that any feminist, or anyone at all, who relates to the attitude of a male farmer who snorted, who the hell knows or cares what a hen wants, will reconsider. Such sentiments of alienation will not make the world a more just place for any sentient being. You just listened to Our Feminist Right to Resist Comparison with Females of Other Species by Karen Davis at upc-online.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.